Dr. Girija to uh, speak about a difficult situation that we face, pseudo-exfoliation glaucoma, and how it's a challenge to manage. Good morning, everyone. Pseudo-exfoliation glaucoma, a challenge to manage. So as all of you know, it's a major risk factor for complications in cataract surgery, and it's the most frequent cause of secondary open angle glaucoma. And it is not only ocular, it's a multi-system disorder. So the, con and the conversion is always very common, that is PXF syndrome to glaucoma occurs in approximately 30% cases in a decade. A few words about the pathogenesis, it's multifactorial, geographical, environmental, and genetic factors play a role. Uh, but PXF glaucoma is not genetically determined. And the conversion to XFS to XFG is considered a, cert, a result of environmental factors. And the anterior segment investigation test showed that there are elevated levels of the oxidative stress markers and a decrease in antioxidant protection molecules like a low ascorbic acid, reduced ocular blood flow, iris hypoperfusion, and anterior chamber hypoxia. And all these changes can cause the increased nuclear cataract formation, dysfunction of the trabecular meshwork, and zonal fragility. Another thing is that the lamina cribrosa becomes more vulnerable to glaucoma because here the mean peak and fluctuation is very high, and the intervisit IOP variation is also greater. So the vulnerability of the lamina cribrosa Incre increases the optic nerve damage by the unfavorable IOP profile. And consequently, progression without treatment is three times more rapid than that seen in untreated open angle glaucoma. And the deposition of the material is seen not only in the ocular tissues, but also in heart, lung, liver, kidney, meninges, and blood vessels. Patients with ocular PXF may have a history of hypertension, abdominal iota aneurysm, angina, cardiovascular disease, and stroke but the studies are still going on. What are the clinical factor features of, <laughs> clinical features of pseudo-exfoliation glaucoma? Usually they are asymptomatic, but sometimes with uh, increasing cataract or uh, the glaucomatous visual field defects, they can present to you with uh, defective vision, usually in one eye, but later on the other eye also gets involved. And the materials are seen in the pupillary margin as well as on the lens surface in the typical three ring pattern. And there is increased incidence of cataract and zonular weakness. So usually the, um, there will be some amount of the pigment, the, when the deposits are seen, always look for phacodonosis. But otherwise you may meet, uh, miss this and you can pose for a cataract surgery and uh, there may be complications. So this uh, zonular uh, Weakness is due to the proteolytic enzymes in the PXF material or accumulation of the PXF material at the, uh, so the pre-equatorial regions of the lens. There are deposition of uh, PXF material also occurs in the angle and there is increased pigmentation which is may, may be irregular. There is a sampolysis line which is seen in corneoscopy. Increased pigmentation has been correlated with increased IOP. So pigmentation might provide a clinical gauge as to the severity of glaucoma. And always do gonioscopy routinely in all cases of PXF to monitor the ankle. And in case of shallow AC and occludable angles, always do a prophylactic laser PI or an early cataract surgery because PXF is a progressive condition. If you wait for longer, you, the solar dialysis, it can, uh, the weakness can progress and you, you can meet with more complications. And there is a disrupted blood aqueous barrier, which leads to uh, flare in the AC. After dilatation, you can see flare in the AC. And uh, after cataract surgery, also there is an increased exaggerated inflammatory response. The iris shows flex of uh, peaks of material and pigment deposited on the anterior and the posterior surface of the iris. And there will be atrophic and fibrotic changes in the sphincter muscle. And the, the poor dilatation in PXF is ca caused by the atrophic and the fibrotic changes, and also the degeneration of dilator and sphincter muscles. The cornea shows decreased endothelial cell de density as well as altered morphology. And there will be flake-like PXF material seen in the corneal endothelium. 
The accumulation of the material between the endothelial cells and Desmet's membrane is a possible cause for direct cellular degeneration. And the IOP increase, the iris ischemia, and increased flare intensity may directly affect the, the homeostasis. So you have the altered morphology also. The capsular glaucoma or the PXF glaucoma, there is a, a significantly high prevalence in all cases of PXF syndrome. And it, it arises secondary to the uh, accumulation of the material in the trabecular meshwork. And a consequence of angle closure, uh, that is, you can get an open angle glaucoma or you can get an angle closure glaucoma due to sonular laxity. So why do you consider it as a challenge? Because it's a particularly aggressive type of open angle glaucoma which uh, does not respond that well to medical treatment and it, uh, it has a very fast rate of progression with uh, severe disc damage. And there is a, the IOP profile is also not very favorable. So what are the risks in cataract surgery in a pseudo exfoliation? Pseudo exfoliative uh, patients are actually five, they show a five times greater likelihood of complications during cataract surgery. The zonlopathy and the iridopathy, everything will make the surgery a challenge. Due to the non-dilating pupil, you cannot do a large rexis. There is zonlar weakness, so the lens will be unstable during the surgery. You can get an uh, unexpected PCR, uh, vitreous loss, etc. So you have to take measures like soft shell technique for that is a uh, use of OVDs, then pupillary dilators like rings or hooks, and capsular tension ring, and sphincterotomy, which can lessen the rate of complications. So what is a soft, sh soft shell technique is actually, it's a very helpful technique when you do a surgery in, uh, sorry, I don't have good videos. I couldn't get a video after this topic was selected. Uh, actually, you have to put a dispersive OVD, first to coat the corneal endothelium, and you have to use a cohesive OVD to deepen the anterior chamber, and flatten the anterior lens capsule, and maintain the adequate pupil dilatation. Never overinflate the anterior chamber because it can stretch the sonules and you can get an unexpected nucleus drop. And uh, posterior, sin the synecae should be always lysed. Either you can do visco, uh, visco or you can use a blunt spatula. And you, ha you have to mechanically stretch and dilate the pupil using iris hooks or eye rings. And careful manipulation should be done. Uh, it is required due to the ischemic fragile iris. And uh, capsule retractors are very useful here. And implantation of a modified CTR suture to the sclera will assure anteroposterior stability of the IOL bag complex because this is a post, the progressive condition and you can get the IOL, uh, the decentration and later on the IOL with the CTR can drop into the vitreous. And the choice of IOL usually, you, you, the single piece IOL is preferred because it requires less manipulation. It is better not to use premium IOLs because of unsatisfactory visual outcome. And sulcus placement is better avoided because again, there is probability of decentration and posterior dislocation. AC IOLs are better avoided. The postoperative complications always, you, have, you need a rigorous follow-up because they are more prone for increased inflammation, progressive, uh, that is, um, and endothelial damage. Even though the endothelial damage is not permanent, you have to follow up the patient. Then late complications like progressive destabilization of the sonules, capsular contraction, and decentration and dislocation of the IOL can occur with time. So the treatment of uh, PXF glaucoma is with, uh, initially you can, in open angle glaucomas, you can use anti-glaucoma medications, but you get a poor response. Uh, lasers can be used. They show usually good response to argon laser trabeculoplasty or SLT. Then in unresponsive cases, you can do a trabeculectomy. So newer treatments like trabecular aspiration where you wash the, rim, uh, the material from the trabecular meshwork using an externally applied suction device or a trabectome. It's a newer thing. Then Zen implants are tried. Gonio wash is elimination of the material located on the trabecular meshwork and the hydroconeal angle using pressure irrigation. So that is also a newer technique. So the take home message is a planned approach is required during cataract surgery in PXF to avoid the uh, uh, advance, always the, uh, avoid the complications. 
always use advanced techniques of echoemulsification or when you are doing as SICS, do sphincterotomy or use iris hooks. Specific OVDs have to be used and capsular support devices in case, of, in case it's needed. And long-term post-operative surveillance that should be there because progressive complications, you can get long-term IOL decentration and drop.